Hey everybody, uh, I'm really excited because Valve just released a preview of the latest SteamOS update 3.7.0. This is super exciting because this changes the game in a lot of ways for SteamOS. Uh, it has what many people thought was actually an impossible uh, update for Valve to release. Uh, and uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But I wanted to go over the process of testing this out, uh, switching to the preview branch, testing out as many of the changes as I can, and then checking out that impossible change that I was talking about. So stay tuned to the end of the video because you don't want to miss that. Now let's go ahead and switch to the preview channels. So we're going to hit Steam and we're going to go to uh, Settings. And then we're going to go down here to System, go down to the beta participation and switch to the preview channel. And that's going to make us restart. That's all right. We, we want to restart here. We want to make sure that we are updating to the latest version of SteamOS in the preview channel. Now, this is going to take uh, probably about five minutes to do. So I did it on uh, my LCD model that I have, and it took uh, maybe about three and a half, four minutes, something like that. Um, we'll see how it goes with the OLED model, which is what I'm doing this on now. Let's see, we started this at 11.16. It's 11.17 now. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> so I got a new capture card for uh, doing all this. It's the EVGA XR1. And uh, I was using this guy. This was this is the Avermedia Lag Gear Portable 2. I'd have video going in through HDMI here over USB into OBS. Uh, and there seems to be a much more significant delay uh, using this new capture card than using this. Um, but the video quality seems better and the colors seem more accurate, which is, and this was also far more, uh, far more unreliable uh, on Linux specifically. Like I'd have to like restart OBS multiple times before uh, this signal would actually appear and be usable. EVGA XR1 has much greater reliability as far as I can tell so far. It's been four minutes now. So now if we go, oh, why is it saying beta? I wanted the preview channel. We can see we're on the wrong version, 3.6.22. We want 3.7.0. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, switch to preview. I don't know if I switched to beta on accident, Go down to the beta participation and switch to the preview channel. So I know that I clicked the uh, preview channel on my uh, LCD model and uh, I went and checked and it also moved it to the beta channel instead. So it's a little bit obnoxious. Um, hopefully it will install the 3.7.0 version now. I'm, I'm doing them both simultaneously. Oh. That didn't take very long at all. Let's go down here, settings, system, preview. There we go. Scroll down. We're still on version 3.6.22. There we go. All right, so we have to be in the OS update channel and then you have to just click it again and it will check for an update and then you hit apply. That was a little bit more uh, annoying than it should have been, honestly. I'm gonna do that on my OLED as well. On my LCD, I should say. So they've updated to a newer Arch Linux base, which is good. Uh, they've updated the Linux kernel to version 6.11. Um, they've updated the Mesa graphics driver base, uh, which should result in some uh, rather interesting performance gains. And they've updated the desktop to now ship with Plasma 6.2.5 which is a very large leap. As far as I know, they're on Plasma 5. So this is gonna be an, an insane jump in terms of usability and, and user interface changes and stuff. It's gonna be nice. Let's go to desktop mode and just check out how things are going over there. Cause I really wanna see Plasma 6.2 on the Steam Deck. Yeah, look at that. So KDE, uh, the new, newest versions of KDE have the, the bottom, the taskbar here kind of hovering off of the edges of the screen. I don't know how I feel about that. And then if we go in here and we say, um, you name dash a, or look at that. We got uh, Linux 6.11.11. This kernel is tuned for the Steam Deck hardware. 
that's pretty freaking nifty if you ask me. And you can see now that we have a full screen window open, the, the task bar here goes to be just a bar across the bottom rather than like a floating dock. See the difference there? So that's a pretty neat feature. This is KDE 6.2.5. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about in desktop mode is file light. This is a disk usage analyzer and um, we can check our home folder and it will tell us how much of our disk usage is actually full and it will give us a breakdown of each um, of each directory and how large they are and how much space they're taking up. My goodness. So I've got, I'm using 880 gigabytes of a gig, of a terabyte, which is pretty awesome. Let's see, we have .var. So bottles is taking up some space. And we have Steam Deck games. And I got Rocket League installed through Epic Game Store, which is taking up 27 gigabytes. Here we have Heroic, which I have Star Wars The Force Unleashed installed and that's taking up 28 gigabytes, but then the rest of it is gonna be Steam. If we, and we, we can click on this and we'll drill down into that directory, and we can see we have Doom Eternal, we have Cyberpunk 2077, we have Halo the Master Chief Collection, Marvel's Spider-Man re, uh, Remastered, God of War, The Outer Worlds, uh, Spacer's Choice, Lego Star Wars, Dead Space, CNC remastered, and then the rest of them. This gives you a really handy breakdown from desktop mode of all of the directories that are taking up the most space on your on your machine. And this comes by default in this new um, version of SteamOS, which is really nice. Uh, another big change is that surround sound now works. Um, so if you plug this into a surround sound enabled receiver, then you will get surround sound which is really nice. According to the change log here, enabling the setting is currently only available via desktop mode. But given the trajectory SteamOS is on, I suspect there will be options for that in, uh, in game mode quickly hereafter. Just a quick FYI, I tried this on my home theater setup and it did not seem to work. So that's pretty much everything for desktop mode. So let's go back into game mode. So let's go down here. Let's go to our Bluetooth settings. And you can see now that we have actual uh, battery indicator for paired devices, which is really nice. And if we connect this controller here, my uh, DualSense, hypothetically, this should work. You can see that we have this little toggle option, right? This is nothing new for the OLED model. Um, I have my my controller is connected. You can see I'm pushing the, the button here and it's bringing that up. I can go back. Um, and if I shut this off, it'll shut off the controller. And then I can do this and it will turn it back on. Took a second, but it did. And if we go back into the settings, maybe it'll have, it doesn't have the power there. It should, at some point the power will be supported here. And that's all well and good. But as we all know, one of the chief reasons for upgrading to the Steam Deck OLED was because this feature was impossible on the LCD model, or so we were told. However, according to the change log here, this is now possible on the Steam Deck LCD. I'm gonna turn on my overhead camera. Here we go. I'm going to uh, go into Bluetooth here. And I'm going to forget this one. I'm going to turn this device on into pairing mode. And it should appear here. Wireless controller. Go ahead and hit that. All right, now we're connected. Let's tap on this bad boy. Allow this device to wake Steam Deck. This should be impossible according to what Valve has said. But if we shut it off and then we do this, 
Oh my god, that is so cool. <laughs> uh, and that's really like, for, if you had asked me like a couple weeks ago even, if that was going to be possible, I would have said absolutely not. No, no way. Valve said that it wasn't possible on the uh, LCD model. And yet here we are. Like, let's try it again. <laughs> That's so cool. Uh, which that opens up a bunch of really neat options because if you have an LCD and an OLED, uh, you could now use the LCD model as like a dedicated docked system. Now I'm, I'm wondering what other doors this will open because being able to do this with standard hardware, maybe this will mean that uh, other built-in Bluetooth modules might get this support at some point. Who knows? I, I, I'm not gonna say that yes or no to that. This might only be possible because Valve has full control over the, the drivers and the firmware of the devices in this, right? But yeah, it's pretty impressive to see nonetheless. And I'm looking forward to what else Valve can do for this hardware. I mean, the fact that they are still investing time in developing updates for their original hardware three years on. You know, that's more than a lot of Android devices get these days, <laughs> which that's a pretty low bar to clear, honestly. But, you know, it's still pretty nice to see. This is Emily's Steam Deck. She plays Fields of Mystery a lot. I'm really happy with this update for SteamOS. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Um, what other things would you like to see uh, changed or added or fixed to the Steam Deck? I, I the, the sky is the limit, right? Well, I think that's everything I wanted to touch on today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoy these videos, if you believe in the work that I'm doing here, you can use the links below to become a monthly supporter over on Patreon, just like these guys have. These guys make what I do here a reality. Uh, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to do this. And I really do appreciate everybody who has pledged their support. Um, that's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.